Hi, welcome to this high-level demo of IBM Spectrum Copy Data Management. Spectrum Copy Data Management utilizes hardware APIs to create snapshots, replicas, or clones of data, and it keeps track of every copy in a catalog. Spectrum Copy Data Management enables you to use these copies for multiple business purposes. It can automate the reuse or recovery of the snapshots, or even refresh or provide fresh copies of this data on an ad hoc or scheduled basis basis. When it's decided that the data in use needs to be pushed into production, Spectrum Copy Data Management can do it quickly and easily with the push of a button. When extraneous copies of data need to be cleaned up, Spectrum Copy Data Management Catalog will let you know where those copies are and automatically clean them up so as not to be utilizing too much storage capacity and causing data sprawl. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Peppy Lamb to walk you through how Spectrum Copy Data Management works. Hello, my name is Peppy Lamb. I will be going over the configuration of Spectrum Copy Data Management. Spectrum Copy Data Management is an orchestration tool that handles heterogeneous storage environments and snapshots and replications. It's an easy to deploy OVA that you can deploy through a vCenter environment. After you have deployed the OVA environment, you logged in. This is the first screen that you'll see. This is the dashboard of Spectrum Copy Data Management. Here you have all the different information on your jobs, your statistics around your appliance, different reports, and the success rate for your jobs. One of the first things we want to do is go to the Configure tab. And here you'll be configuring different providers. The providers are your storages, your vCenter environment, and your applications. Now, one of the first things you wanna do is to configure the different sites. If you're using your storage on multiple different sites, this is where you would actually create the different sites for it. By default, there's gonna be one site here, as you can see, default, but if you have different environments or different locations, you can add the different sites here. First thing we wanna do is register storage. So I'm gonna right click on storage, hit register, and it'll pop up this window where you can actually register your IBM storage server. First, you can select a different site, provide a logical name. The host address could be a fully qualified domain name or IP address. And then you actually want to provide the user credentials. You can create new user credentials and it's just gonna create username, password, or you can select from a list of existing credentials. As you can see here, I have a couple storage is already registered. Next, I want to register a vCenter environment. Goes to the exact same process, right-click register, provide a logical name, host address, and user credentials. After registering any provider, an inventory job will be created, which will collect all the metadata for that specific provider. For example, for storages, it'll collect volumes, flash copies, different hosts. For vCenters, it'll look for data stores, ESX hosts, and VMs in that vCenter environment. Moving on to the application server. And here you'll see the different applications that we support in Spectrum Copy Data Management. We support SAP HANA, Inner Systems Cache and Iris, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle. Now I'm going to select Oracle for this example. And here the screen is similar to the storages and your vCenter. You have a name, host address, which could be an IP address or fully qualified domain name, the different type. For applications, we support both virtual and physical applications. For virtual, you just have to select a vCenter, and physical, you don't have to select anything, you just have to select physical. And here you also have the option to select user credentials or provide new user credentials. Once again, after registering the application server, it will also create an inventory job which will collect all the information on that application, all the different databases, and where the database mount points are. Moving on to the next section, we have access control, which allows users to create role-based access control. Now users can have access to different specific jobs, specific providers, and we can limit users to what tasks they can actually do with that access. The next section we have is identities, which would be a list of all the user credentials saved in your CDM appliance. 
The next section is the SLA policies. Here you'll define the frequency and retention of your snapshots and your replication. So you want to select new, select the storage. Now here you have a couple different backup types for IBM storages. So you can create a flash copy and with it, you can create incremental flash copies. You can also set the retention by either the number of days or the maximum number of snapshots. We also have the ability of allowing you to create volume prefix labels for your flash copies. One of the new features that we have in the next release of Spectrum Copy Data Management is adding safeguarded copy support. Here, if you select safeguarded copy support, first you're going to want to select the volume group that you want to protect. So once you select the volume group, then you set the retention, set the retention of what you want to keep the snapshot for. Now, safeguarded copies, the way it's set up is that CDM will not control the retention. We will pass the retention over to the storage and then the storage will control when the snapshots are deleted. It's an immutable copy. So that means no one else will be able to change it and only specific admin users on the storage have the ability to delete that flash copy. The options are similar to a flash copy, provide a volume flash copy prefix. And then once you want to save your SLA policy, just provide a name and hit finish. Moving on to the next section, we have scripts, which would be a list of all the pre and post scripts that you have available for your different jobs that I'll go over in the later presentation. And the last section in the configure tab is the schedules. Here you can define different schedules that can be used for your jobs. Moving on to the job section. Here, it will list out all the different jobs that you can run in CDM. As I mentioned earlier, when you register your provider, one of the first things you'll do is create an inventory job. And the inventory job will collect all the metadata. After the inventory job has completed, you can then create backup jobs. So I'm going to hit new, hit backup. It'll list out all the different servers that you have, and you also have the database that you can protect. So you want to select your database and then select your SLA policy. Now, right now, this will create a normal Oracle backup job. But if I want to schedule it, I just have to enable schedule, select a schedule time. It'll run at that specific time every single day, depending on the frequency that's set in your SLA policy. For backup jobs, there's also the advanced options. Here, each advanced option is going to be dependent on the application that you're backing up. For example, for Oracle, you have the option of recording copies in our man local repository, and you also have the option of adding pre and post job level scripts or job level snapshot scripts. In addition, there's also a notification where you can get email alerts of your jobs. For specific applications, such as Oracle, SQL, SAP HANA, you have the option of forming log backups. And this, this option will allow you CDM to take a snapshot of the log directory. Moving on, for Oracle, there's also an option for data masking. And this here, if you enable data masking, you just have to provide a third-party masking routine. Right now, I'm going to go through creating a VMware backup job. So you want to click backup. You'll first have a list of all the vCenters that you have registered. I'll select a specific VM, select the SLA policy, provide it a name. create the job. And then if I want to kick off the job, select the job, hit start, select the SLA policy. And you'll see here, the job starts. And this is the job log in CDM, which will give you details of the actual job that's running. It'll go line by line of what's going on in the back end when it's creating the backup job. So what it does for VMware is it's first going to look for the vCenter, look for the VM that's being backed up, look for the specific data stores, map it back to the volume on the storage, and then create a flash copy of that volume on the storage. This job should complete pretty quickly. It might be a couple minutes. So after the VM backup has completed, next thing you can do is create a restore job. So you want to hit new, hit restore. For VMs, you have a couple different options. So you have the instant disk restore, which allows you to restore an individual disk to a VM. You also have the option to do instant VM restore, which will just restore the entire VM to a vCenter environment. 
to instant VM restore. Here you'll see a list of all the VMs that I have backed up in my environment. This is the one I just backed up. Select the individual copy. By default, it uses the latest flash copy, but if you have more backups, you can select individual backups to restore from. Next, moving on to the destination, I have a couple different options. I can restore it to the original host or cluster with a GCP enabled, restore it to the original host or cluster with a static IP, or restore it to an alternate host or cluster. After I provide a name, create the job, and then I can go start the job. Now, by default, SCDM will create a test restore, meaning that it will create a temporary data store for VMware restores and mount it to the ESX host. There's also a couple different options for production or clone, which will make permanent copies on your vCenter environment. So right now I'm going to do a test restore and like the backup job, you'll get a job session link, which will give you all the information of what's happening in the background. For restores, CDM will first look for the flash copy that was selected to restore from, clone that flash copy to a separate volume, then that new clone volume will be mounted to the ESX host and it will be given a new a temporary data store name. Once it's mounted as a data store, then CDM will run vCenter commands, restore that VM from that specific new data store. So as you see here, it's mounting the copy, mounting the volumes, it's mounting all the data, and then it's once it mounts the volume to the ESX host, rename the data store as a temp data store, and then it'll go through the process of restoring the full VM. So as you can see here, the VM restore completed, and you'll see here it's in a resource active state. Now this VM, if you go to your vCenter, is you can just power it on and it's a VM that you can utilize uh, if you wanna run any tests against. Now, since it's in a resource active state, CDM has this information in its catalog and can still run a couple different options. You have the option to do a cleanup, which will gracefully clean up the VM restore for the user. You have RRP, which performs the storage view motion and RRP stands for rapid restore to production. So it will restore the storage view motion of the VM back to the production data store, which the source VM was originally on. And you also have the option of doing clone, which also performs a storage remotion on the vCenter to a data store that uh, the user specifies. So I'm going to run the option of doing cleanup, and now it's going to gracefully clean up everything. So it will first bring down the VM, unmount the data store, unmount the volume from the ESX host, and then delete the clone volume from the storage. You'll see here, it's in the same restore job session and it's in, I'll start the process of doing the cleanup for the end user. As you can see here, the job completed, the restore job completed. And then next I want to show the reports. So I'll go to the reports tab and here are the different reports that you can run in your environment. One report on the catalog summary. And also one of the important reports is the storage utilization report, which gives you information on your, your storage environment, how much is being protected by CDM. So you select the report, select new, and he here you'll see the name of the storage, usable capacity, and the managed capacity. This report is useful for any licensing. In addition, we have other reports for protection compliance. So you can get reports on the RPOs for the different storages, and you can also see different recovery points for your applications. So new, this will list out all the different recovery points for all the different applications that are registered in your environment. And that's pretty much what I have for the reports. Great, thank you, Pepe. Thank you for watching this video and be sure to check out the other videos we have on Spectrum Copy Data Management.